others. We're happy and we're singing and we're colored. Give me a high five. Yo, what's going on, everybody? This your boy, Flaw 700, a.k.a. Flaw Claw Van Damme, a.k.a. Flaw Cigar. Oh! A.k.a. your boy, Dumb Sum Gordon. Dumb Sum Gordon, that's what Word. Okay. And who you be? What's happening, everybody? It is your favorite fly guy, the one and only Fresco. Let's go. Do you dig all of that? What's happening? And we are the Podcast Brothers, and this is episode 182. Episode 182, man. Hey, I damn near lost my voice during it. Ah! <laughs> I couldn't get all the way out. You lost it. Yeah. <clears throat> mm, mm, mm. Let me get this back. Mm, mm. 182 of the Podcast Brothers, man. It's been a minute. And um, what's that We Are Bike thing? Where did you get that from? The B-Y-K-E? Yeah, that's just the country ass way for saying back. Okay. That's I, I, probably I some shit somebody got from Plies. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like some shit he did. Yeah. I see wild people uh, uh, posting it and, and, you know, naming their episodes out there or just saying it. I, I, I didn't know where it came from. Oh, for real? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was something recent that happened that had people saying that. I don't know, but it sounded like some shit Plies would say. It does. We 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 are back, episode one eighty two of the podcast, brothers. How's everything? Everything good. Man. How's your mental health? How was your week? What have you been up to? Let's get How's right to the week? shits. How's my life? <laughs> Two months, man. <laughs> the shit has been the same exact same since the last time we talked. It ain't shit different. Um, get, got some things expecting coming up. Um, I'm starting my own car detailing business. You're. So if you in the Burlington County or Mercer County or the surrounding areas, it is mobile. I will come to you. Wash your car inside and out. Uh, sedans are one fee. Trucks and SUVs are another. You know what I'm saying? You get the inside, the outside, the clean wash, the spick and span, the grand slam. You get all of that. So you can hit me on my Instagram, which is Fresco Fame. You know what I'm saying? Or on my on my um, Facebook at Fresco J. You can schedule an appointment. We can get you right, man. How does um, that feel? It's pretty cool, actually. You know, and it's just, start- just the idea of you starting your own. It started thing. off as an idea, and I just said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna do it." I just jumped out the window and bought all the shit before I even really had a clientele. I just figured it was something that's in high in demand. So, um, you know, when I kind of made a little announcement on it, whatever, I got decent returns so far. I already got a couple of joints scheduled already. So, <laughs> I, you know, it's just. All about word of mouth and putting in that good old elbow grease, man. You know what I'm saying? So, um, that ain't nothing that's gonna be. I don't, it don't seem nothing that's gonna be too crazy, too hard. You just, you know, gotta put in the work. That's that's really it. So, I'm I'm looking forward to doing that. And that's dope because you know we're all, well, majority of us are on our black business. I'm um, supporting black business tips. So, for those that was getting a car detail before, if you want to go to a brother now, you know, and if you know. No fresco, reach out to fresco. Now you can, you know, give your money to another black person. Do you dig that? Mm. I will take it. <laughs> um, getting closer for the arrival of my daughter being born in September. You know I'm going to saying? go OD on this clapping joint. Sorry, it's, it's quite all right. I got a lot to, uh, that needs to be applauded. <laughs> so it's, it's, I expected this. <laughs> uh, yeah. So looking forward to that, man. I've never been so prepared for the arrival of a child, like <laughs> ever. <laughs> Everything's done already, basically. We still having a baby shower, which is um, in a week or so. But it's kind of like, do we even need this shit, bro? Because we got it. The room set up, the crib set up, the diapers set up. Like it's you can never get enough of diapers, though. You can't. But at this point, I don't know where we're gonna put them shit. To mm. be honest with you, everything's everything's a go, man. It's really just waiting on the day for that thing to drop. Pop. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> just just waiting for that. But you know, um. Making sure my son's good, getting big, yo. He he get, he says he has a new phrase every week, but some of them stick longer than others. So now when he when I do something he don't like or I say something he don't think I should be saying, he goes, "Oh, daddy, you naughty, naughty bird." <laughs> 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 he wags his finger at me when he does it, like, "Oh, daddy, you naughty, naughty bird." I'm like. All right, I guess I got to stop now. I don't want to be a naughty bird. What can you say to that? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, the last thing I want to be around here is a naughty bird. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So I got to cut that out ASAP. But um, yeah, man, I just um, just making certain advancements of progression, just trying to find 
a level of what's the word I'm looking for? It starts with an S. A level of that's not a word. I was about to make that up. A level of being a, being sustained at a certain level. You know that, what I'm saying? That starts with S. That's the word I was looking for, but I didn't know which context <laughs> I was searching to use it in. Okay. But I figured it out. It's all right. I'm a fucking wordsmith. But anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just about it, man. Just putting one foot in front of the other, man, and getting the work done. I got a couple of um, underground hustles kind of going on the way, and that's about to take off. So I'm ready. I'm ready to hit the ground running, man. Before I get into what I've been up to, I just want to say that we appreciate the listens and downloads that we still get from the podcast brothers i still be seeing that the numbers be moving rest in peace kobe man right and i'd be like yo what the hell are they listening to because we ain't putting out no new material but you know some people they they go back you know or you know they're just catching up some people have catching up to do and salute to y'all we appreciate yes. it shout out to listening in our absence well how long was going on a little about two months i think it was april by end April? of April when yeah. we stop recording. Also, man, it's like I'm definitely not going to like you can't really take stuff seriously. And I think that is to beat myself in the head with the podcasting. But I say that to say, you know, there was like a young lady listening to our podcast. I told her I did a podcast. So she went and listened to the first episode, which people do. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of one of the reasons why, even though you don't drop, you still get downloads because there's people that want to hear your whole Discography, right? Like they they're not going to start at episode one eighty two, right? They're going to start from episode one and keep going. So after listening to episode one, this young lady could not tell him, could not stop telling me about how funny we were, how great this podcast is. And mm-hmm. in my head, I'm like, I get it, but if you like that, <laughs> right? Like wait till you get, episode. yeah, like wait till you get to the good stuff, the well, good, we actually good got stuff. seasoned with yeah. how we did our work. But that just goes to jerk. Sh- but that just goes to show you, man, you don't really have to beat yourself over the head with, hey, we need some good stuff. Because if you just got the personality, people rock with you and you show up and you give it your all during that show. Good things is going to come out because there were tons of episodes that we did that I thought was trash that people actually liked. And then there were some episodes that we walked away like, yo, that was it. Bravo. That was it. So Bravo, he, mate. So, right. So. But before I get into my week, once again, I want to say that I officially have a high school graduate. Oh, man. Class 2020. Shout out to my son. Shout out, nephew. Offici- officially graduated. But the graduation is in July. So there's still one more thing that we have to do. And I know it was tough for him. It was tough for a lot of people. Um, it's a dumb school. In year. school. Yeah, this was crazy. First off, with the Trenton High kids, they didn't even have a school to go to for the last two years. So they was all over the place because they was building the high school. Right. So the year 2020 was this big year for the seniors and everybody else coming in. They fucked it up. They got fucked up. For high school. And then for this to happen to them when they finally got a home. It's like, yo, fam, we technically been like. Could have stayed where I was the fuck at. (laughs) Right. But I can can just imagine how un. I'm I'm trying to find a word. But how they could have felt for the last two years. Unplaced. Homeless. I like. It. I was going to say homeless, but I ain't want to no go school. there. How the fuck we ain't got no school building, but y'all still want us to do work. This is a fact, <laughs> people. For the for the people that don't know, in the city of Trenton, they were rebuilding a high school, so all the high school kids had to be um, separated all over the city of Trenton into different schools. So like they turned Vermont separated. They turned high. They turned middle schools into high schools, and they turned like so many other different facilities into schools. So in the year 2020, 19, the year. 2019 going into 2020, the school was officially ready to be reopened. And it was the big year for the seniors who have been misplaced for the last two, three years. Mm -hmm. And then they get to the school and then COVID hit. And then boom, now, you know, the unknown is happening. Now they got to work from school, work from home, do do school work from home. Graduation is up in the air. It's just not what they planned it. So these Seniors have had a crazy three to four years, man. But I salute them for pulling through all of them, man. Shout out to my son for being class 2020. Let's look. Also, to piggyback off what Fresco was talking about starting his own business, your boy got his LLC. Let me hit that clap button again. Let's look. Minor Investments LLC. I should have did my Googles, though. I think there's another Minor Investments. So and technically, I think like 
I can get the percentage of that because I'm minor too. You feel me? So you want to be no. a little bit more. You want to know one of JL the, minor? I was thinking that because I think I might have to go back in and put like a JLM or just be more creative. But to piggyback off what you were saying about you starting your own thing, when you actually apply for your LLC, get money, and it says like who is the CEO and you put yourself as the boss, Mm -hmm. even though you haven't made any money yet or whatever, whatever, regardless of what you're doing with your LLC, it just feels good to start a business and you're at the head of it. How much that cost? Cause the LLC, the LLC, I think I didn't pay no more than two fifty for it. They go my folder right there. You, it's, it's probably cheaper, and there's other ways to do it for free. Mm-hmm. But I went through that. Oh, for that F R E E, I'll let your boy. What you mean F R E E? You say it's probably cheaper or for free. It's probably it, there are ways to do it for free. I've heard about it. There's ways. There's things you got to do. I can send you the link of how my man did it. I already had paid for mine, but um. I went through that company right there. I'll, I'll let you see the folder right there. Got all my certificates, all my paperwork. I'm legit. I am a businessman. Mm-hmm. Everything that Jay Z said is coming to fruition for me. I'm not a businessman. I am a business man. Let me handle my business. Damn. One thing you didn't talk about was you celebrated your birthday. Oh shit! I that, forgot. We've been gone. I forgot, man. Oh yeah, I had a birthday. The big three four. You heard? Mm-hmm. Feel me? I had a tap party. I was getting inked the fuck up. I fell asleep. Mm. I was so stoned, bro. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think I had, if I had to count the amount of Dutches or joints I had that day, hmm, I don't know. I want to say like 15, but all I remember is my brother Dean ended up coming late and I damn near had to kick him out because I was so high. I was about to fall asleep at the drop of a hat. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yo, bro, man, I'm about to go to fuck the bed, bro. Like, I, like, I mean, it was like 5 a.m. Like, I can't. 5 a.m. I'm always up, man, early. I'm always oh, up oh, early. oh, you get up early. I thought he was over there to like 5 a.m. I don't know. No, no, no. I'd have been kicked him out. Mm-hmm. Go. Well, I, I said that to say that I celebrated a birthday. I'm going to go OD on this clap. Liddy. I'm telling you. The boy turned 37. Oh, 37. Yo, don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> 37. Always remember, it's a three-year difference. It's easy math. Yeah, if you're 34, I'm 37. Yeah, whatever. Simple. Man, at turn, turning 37 felt great, man. I, I'm in the best spirit mentally uh-huh. that I've ever been Having in. I just... The time of my life. And, and I never, never felt this way before. Never felt and this I way. Swear. It's, it's a true, and I owe it all to you. Wait, 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 wait. Song mm-hmm. fire, but we can't forget the fact that mm-hmm. my man um was chasing his little sixteen year old girl, fam. You know what? <laughs> I, 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 I never negated that part. I watched that movie one time, and I never gave a fuck about it again. So I, just I like, like the I, I like, like the that song. I like the dance scene, but we, I'm straight. I, but, I'm good on that. Nah, he he killed it at the end. But goddamn, just to find out that this whole time you're trying to persuade a minor. I'm not really interested in white people love stories know how. So I ain't really give a shit. Don't care. That's a fact. <laughs> it's different over there. Hey, hey, listen, whatever y'all do. Shout out to our white listeners. This is not about you. <laughs> I mean I want all the listeners. <laughs> shout out to our white listen. Shout out to our white I friends. Mean, shout out to our white allies. Listen, let me listen. Shout out to the white allies, man. But at the same time, let me let me inform you motherfuckers on something. All right. Now ain't the time for you niggas to be sensitive. All right? All right. Shit is on our side. <laughs> it's our time. It's our fucking hour. Shit. I at least for the rest of this year. Now, you know, I can go back to oppressing niggas at the start of twenty twenty one. Nah, 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 we ain't going. For the rest back. of this year, we ain't going back. And we still there. Ain't shit different. It's just niggas is you know making their voices heard. But at the end of the day, right as right now, it ain't it ain't much fucking different. Hey, didn't what you call it? Didn't old boy in Atlanta get shot after they killed uh, George Floyd? Uh, Mer- Police officers are still killing people. It's not. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah. so you know, niggas went nuts after the whole George Floyd shit. But like a week later, this shit happened in another state. Like weeks later, like week week after week, like things are still happening. Right. But I'm I'm happy that people are speaking out. And I'm not, yeah, it's definitely a positive yeah, thing. Some things, some but, law, some things are being changed, and we're going to talk about it because one of the things is about like one thing I want to talk about is you know everybody deciding they don't want to play black characters no more. Like we don't, I don't care. But we'll get to that later. We'll get I had to that a later. Karen leave a note on my car this morning. I twice. saw it. That was real. That was real, bro. I woke up this morning. 
it was it was raining or whatever when I um initially woke up, so I lay back down. When I got up again, I just happened to take a look out the window and I see something wet on my windshield wiper, like a piece of paper. I was like, what the fuck is that? I ain't paying no mind. So it was, you know, I went about my business. I ended up going to Columbus this morning, me and my girl. And as I'm walking past, we got we went in her car. I'm walking past my car. I grabbed the joint off the the windshield. <laughs> the note says, learn how to park your car. Really? Bro, when I say my shit was nowhere near deflecting anyone from parking any space, I mean, yeah, my shit was crooked, but it was on the line. It wasn't over the line. It was on the line. Still enough ample space for the motherfucker next to me to park. I went and I looked, and I was like, when I seen this shit, I bought the paper up, and I threw it right back on that goddamn windshield. I didn't even know if it was the car next to me. I just tossed it. It just looked like you. <laughs> Were there yeah. any cars out there when you parked? What do you mean? Like other parked cars? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you did okay. Cause I was gonna cause I saw the picture, but I'm like, is this like what's that was the second one though. The first one I balled up and I tossed that shit oh, and she, I went in the car. She wrote you again? I went in the car and I went off to Columbus and I went about my fucking business. I come back from Columbus. <laughs> <laughs> I come back from fucking Columbus. It's another note on the car that says that was the one that I posted. Can you can you please move your car so I can park, please? And they put their apartment number up there. I started to knock on their door. I was like, nah, it ain't that serious. Oh, they, oh, it, it's getting spicy now. I was like, so it ain't that serious. You, you've never parked there before. It's no assigned parking space there. So they just they didn't like. About? They didn't like the way that I parked. They said that they couldn't park based on the way that I was parked when I wasn't in stopping them or like blocking that parking space at all. My car was a tad bit crooked, yes, but that parking spot was still fully accessible. Like, it wasn't blocked at all. I, I went down when I saw the second note again. I read it. I bought this shit up and then I threw it away. And then I was like, wait a minute, let me put this shit on the ground. <laughs> and like niggas know that's why I saw crinkling and shit in the picture. I would have knocked on Karen's door on something. The fuck are you talking about? Yeah, seriously. Mm. The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> now, I was I was actually waiting by the window, looking to see if a motherfucker was gonna put no shit. another note on my door. I mean on my window. And I was like, hey, yo, don't put nothing else in my car, bro. Like, you can still fucking park there. And if you can't park there, I don't know if you got eyeballs, but if you happen to oh, use the motherfuckers to take a look around, there's other available fucking parking spots. Fuck is you talk? What I look like getting in my car and adjusting my parking spot for you because your non-driving ass is trying to park in one specific park. I got a big SMD for you, motherfucker. <laughs> I just hope it's not worse. I just hope it's not bigger than what um, we're making a scene right now. Like, how is the how is the temperature out there? Is it? What you mean? No, I, I, mean, like, I ain't never had no problem. What's the energy nobody. out there? I ain't never. Had, I, don't, okay. I don't talk to nobody. I go about my business. I can see my neighbor coming out his door sometimes. Yo, what's up, bro? You good? Yeah, I'm good, man. All right, cool. Mm. That's it. Other white people want to pass by. Hey, I, at the mailbox. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. Have a good day. Riding my bicycle, like he's jogging. You get that automatic head now. I ain't never had no problems. Speaking of which, another thing happened. Um. The day I actually got my bike, the first day I'm, I was getting my battery changed in my car before I was getting going out for a bike ride. I'm standing, it's me, my homeboy Ernie, and my homeboy Snook. We out there. Ernie, I know? Yeah. He was he was installing my battery for me. Okay. Shout out to Ernie and Snook. So, I'm, um, we standing there, we laughing, just talk, talking, whatever. My back is turned. All I hear is something hit the ground, like swat, like slam, like a hard ass slap. I turn around. This white lady is on the ground like a fish out of water. I look like, oh, shit, is she all right? And then I see she ain't getting up. You know what I'm saying? So then I go to help her up. And I'm like, I look at her shoes. She got these big, dumbass boots on. That's like six sizes too big for her. And her shoes is nowhere near being laced. Like, them shits, her laces is trailing behind her. Well, ain't no wonder you fell. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Yeah, what the fuck is you doing? And you walk? How you walking the dog like this? So, my fir- honestly, my first instinct wasn't to pick her up. My first instinct was to look at her and analyze and see if she was good, if she was going to get up for herself. So I looked at her for a good for like a second or two, and then when I realized she wasn't getting up, that's when I went over there to help her. So me and Snook help her up. Now, when you help somebody up, normally a motherfucker is trying to find their way back to their own balance, right? To get back on their own square and be centered. <laughs> This motherfucker act like she didn't have legs. <laughs> All of her weight was on her arms that I was on one, he was on the other, was using to carry her. All of her fucking weight was on her arms now, and she's dragging her feet behind her. 
bro, it's hot as hell. Now I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating fucking bullets attempting to get this woman from off the ground into her apartment, which was just like a few feet away. It wasn't far, but carrying another fucking human being, that shit felt pretty fucking far. <laughs> so I ain't going to lie, man. At the time, it was not funny. But I will admit that I have a bit of ignorance to me. And when I went in the house later on, I cracked the fuck up about this particular part of the story. Now, we're walking her into down the sidewalk and up the uh, little walkway into her up to her front door. We make it to her front door. Now, obviously, three motherfuckers can't fit through a, a door. You know what I'm saying? While we attempting to, to help her in. So I kind of leaned back, but I was still guiding her in while holding her arm while Snook kind of took the lead on the inside. We th- we let the lady go thinking she had her balance, bro. When I say this lady fell and she knocked everything in her house the fuck <laughs> over all the way down, I was so fucking. Con- it was the first. It was the slowest fall I've ever seen. I swear she could have stood and not fell. She knocked over the coffee table. She knocked over the. <laughs> <laughs> she knocked over everything that was on the fucking coffee table. I shouldn't be laughing. She knocked over. It was like a billboard or something. Like she fell into the billboard, hugged it. Fell face flat on her face. She was dramatic. Then rolled the fuck over like Shaq the fall after, was he, got, dramatic. after yeah. he got fouled. Yeah. And then she's sitting there huffing and puffing. We was like, oh shit, yo, you good? So it's just like, yeah, I, I do this all the time. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> At this point, I'm like, all right, I'm calling the motherfucking, I'm calling 911. Right? <laughs> At this point, I feel like a good fucking Samaritan. I feel the need <laughs> to call 911. I don't feel comfortable leaving this lady in the house. It looked like she just fell on her face outside on the sidewalk. And then when we get her in the house, she literally fucking annihilated her entire apartment upon entry. <laughs> I can't leave her in here without somebody <laughs> checking on her. Like, so I call 911. I, I give them the address or whatever. I tell them what shorty at. Now, I went back in to check on her, but now the dog barking at me. <laughs> they won't let me pass the fucking her, her. I said, you know what, man? You got it, bro. I'm cool. <laughs> Snook was still in the apartment. I was like, yo, you good? Yo, bro, you good? He's like, yeah, you good? He's like, yeah, I'm good. I was like, all right. I ain't coming back in because this little motherfucker barking at me, man. And the apartment has a stitch to it anyway. I don't want to go back. But anyway, um, so yeah, the ambulance got there and she actually f- refused their help. Like, they got there. They asked her if she was all right. If she needed anything, she said, I don't want your help. Please leave. I was like, all right, well, wow, nothing I can do. I went, by, <laughs> I, I went about my day, you know what I'm saying? But that's, that shit was just weird. And I felt like I should inform people of that. I get, I did, I did, I attempted to do a good deed, but it was just weird. Yeah. It was yeah. just weird. Yeah. Also, I was leaving Burlington Coat Factory the other day with my girl. And as soon as we pulled out the motherfucker, it was this Spanish couple stuck in the middle of the street. The man was driving, his girl got out. And was pushing the goddamn car <laughs> <laughs> while he was still driving. <laughs> bro, I pulled over and asked her if she wanted help, bro. <laughs> I said, excuse me, do you need help? She saw me. She said, yeah, fast as hell. She's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just pushed it off to the... It took. It literally took five minutes. It wasn't even no string. With, she, she had heels on, a little tight-ass red skirt. <laughs> he was in a car, bro. Like Steering? Yeah, he was the wheel. <laughs> I, shit was crazy man. <laughs> Shit was crazy bro That's that's the kind of shit I've been having Going on Lately I've been I told my girl I would do more To like help people Just when I see people In situations where I, I can't I think this help. stuff Is around you for a reason Cause it's like It's, it's testing it's you You gotta right. help people I'm, out And I'm helping and As I'm helping I'm just like yo I can see why Assistance is needed You know what I'm saying and I ain't the most Resourceful nigga in the world But god damn Be honest Did you think about Creating a costume and coming creating up with nicknames. Costume. Saying you a hero now, you a superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> creating a costume. You a hero? <laughs> no, I ain't creating no goddamn costume. They better give me. Your, they better create me a goddamn reward. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, they better start creating. Oh, <laughs> hey, so once again, shout out to the people that's been you know still rocking with us since we took a little absence. And for those of you with a YouTube channel. You want to create? <laughs> you want to? <laughs> they still you, cursing this nigga out to this day. You want to create the kind of content that sells itself that it will last you, a very long time. <laughs> that, 
you want to create a YouTube video that works on its own. Like one day when we can start making money off YouTube, it's videos like this one that's going to help us make residual income. Mm-hmm. So a few years ago, over two years, at least, yeah, at least two and a half years, we posted a video debating which is a better show, The Wire or Power. I had no idea this video was going to take off. I think it's one of our most viewed. Yeah, I think it's definitely most most viewed commented on. Are you going to it? You want me to pull it up? Yeah, I yeah. Definitely pull, pull it up. I was watching that shit the other day. Pull it up while I um <laughs> speak speak hey, on know, what I'm speaking on. The dope part about it is you don't have to type our name. You can literally type Power versus the Wire, and, and we it's come the up first video because up. we popping in them YouTube streets. We need fifty more of those, and That's it's and it's a wrap. We, you won't even have to. Well, you probably look, still would. Look. Yeah, yeah. How many views on that? 400, 500? 479. How many comments, though? The wire versus power. Let me hear it. My thing. How many comments? I don't know. Hold on. Yeah, you probably. Okay. 60. 60 comments of people cursing me out. Yeah. So. Tell them. I ain't going to play it. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so every, every week there's somebody telling me how dumb I am. For picking the power over wire and for not even know how to pronounce these guys' name. But that's cool and all. Mm-hmm. Last week, somebody commented on the YouTube channel and was like, yo, what's your Instagram? I'm like, oh man, we got a fan. Listen, the, pod- the Instagram is the podcast, brother. It's Instagram. Boom, there you go. So he follows me. I follow him back. And I didn't go to this guy's page to check him out to see if he's a weirdo or not. I just, you know, Made friends with the guy. Big mistake, buddy. So let me go to the Podcast Brothers Instagram. Let me go to the Podcast Brothers Instagram and check my DMs and see what he was talking about. Here he is. So he hits me up. Big fan of your channel. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing. So I write thanks. We appreciate that. I love when people reach out and tell us what they think of our stuff. I will kindly respond to every one of you. I'm that type of person. It's one of your love languages, ain't it? Right? Positive affirmation. Words of affirmation. Yeah. yeah. Tell me you love like me. That. Tell me you love me, and I will come to you with a thank you, a hug, a dap, a pound. It's just me. You're always going to hear back from me when you show love. Genuine love. You're so he writes back, you're welcome. Big fan of the wire and power. But I think Wire is more realistic and more hoodish. Like in Power, the South Jamaican Queens don't seem that bad as a hood. But in The Wire, Baltimore has a lot of corner boys and drug dealers. Now, this is him doing all the writing. I'm not writing back. His next message goes, but anyway, you want to hear me rap? (laughs) I'm a good rapper. But anyway, but anyway, that's what, wanna, want, that's what the fuck he wanted to talk about. The yeah, whole he didn't want to talk about no power in a wire. <laughs> but anyway, you want to hear me rap? Ain't like you just posted the link to it or nothing either. Like, yeah. you just randomly came out. Why the do I want to hear you rap, pal? But he goes, but anyway, you want to hear me rap? I hope you hear this episode. Nate. I'm a good rapper. I'm not replying. So his next message is, yo, you there? <laughs> <laughs> bro, don't 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 check on me like yeah, that. Yeah, like yo, fr- like, so nah, don't check up on me, bro. Me, me be me being who I am. You reached out, I write back, yeah, let me hear something. You just don't know. Might be a diamond in the rough. So he says, I'm a better rapper than the baby and rowdy rich. Mm, 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 but yo, mm. can I FaceTime you on Saturday? I can't FaceTime right now. <laughs> now I didn't know he wanted me to hear him rap ah, through, through FaceTime. FaceTime. <laughs> like, just make a voice note, my guy. No, like, bro, no, just, just make bro. a voice note, my boy. So I'm like, okay, great. Saturday works. I'm just I'm just shooting the shit, fam. So he goes, yo, what? I don't know what W U D means. I think he I think he was trying to what type are you, Yeah, what, what yo, you what doing? are you doing? I don't like that. Don't don't ask me what am I doing, fam. <laughs> don't do that. And why did you want to create a YouTube channel? I have so many questions for y'all. Why? Why do you have so many questions for us? But it's cool. You like what you saw. Damn, I look up to those boys. I get it. If if that was the energy, I just don't think it was. Some different. But if you love what we do, fine. Got a lot going on. So I reply, it was just a great idea. He write, that's cool. When did you decide to watch Power in the Wire? What? Then he goes, what's up? This was the next. So I, you didn't, you this didn't was Wednesday. That, I didn't reply. Then on Friday, Wednesday, he goes, sup? 8.52 in the morning, though. 8.52 a.m. Nah, man. What do you want? Okay. That so was a Tuesday, too, you said? Wednesday is when he said, what's up? Nah. Tuesday is when he's probably writing all that other crap. Had to be, because if he wrote, sup, at 8.52 in the morning. All right. So Friday, 9.36 a.m. comes. He goes, yo, 
yo, answer. I'm about to rap. Meanwhile, I yo, forgot where I was answer. at. But I, my phone kept going off, so he calling me through Instagram. Nah, he bro. kept calling. You got to block him, bro. I am. But anyways, I wanted you guys to hear this rap that he sent to me. These are the bars that he wanted me to hear. Let me make sure I got the right joint. Y'all ready? Here it go. I'm on the podcast, 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 love class. Friday body, cottage, shut it with light, tight with body, cottage with father, light with shot and tiny. I'm a homo, bone, formal, some alone. I'm like a three with feet, three with Lee T, with the feet, she with Lee T, with TV. Silver Bevan with Kevin Love, with Kevin Tennant. I got more smiles than bows. Emoji with Koji, with Koji, with Koji. Smiles than bows? The fuck? We got more smiles than bows? This is what he sent me. And it had the nerd to post under it. One out of ten. How was it? <laughs> nigga, do you got a negative fucking scale up there, nigga? Negative 40. His next uh, message was, yo, you there? <laughs> Did you ever reply to him? I didn't reply to this guy, man. <laughs> Y'all want to hit them bars again? I know you do. Here it go. I'm on the podcast, 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 love class. Fighting body, not on the podcast. With light, tighter, with body, yeah, with yeah, yeah. Light, with and I'm a whole more bone, with formal, some alone. I'm like a queen with C3, from. with Lee T, My with BT, with Lee T, with TV. Silver Bevan with Kevin Love with Sheva Tellin. I got more smiles than bows. Emoji with Koji, Foji, Loji with Koji. I got more smiles than bows. <laughs> Boy, if you don't. <laughs> oh, man. Boy, if you don't get the fuck out of here. I oh, love podcasting, shit. man. I love podcasting. It's, podca- it's podcasting that has brought so much. Fuck um, mean, huh? Man. I don't know. Yeah, but it's too. podcasting that just brings, you know, characters like him around, special people. You know, you made, we've made That's so many friends. That's the second time somebody offered you something, man. One of, remember that other nigga offered you church, church powers? Church powers. Yeah, he, yeah, I think yeah. that was my favorite episode. Yeah, church powers. <laughs> <laughs> that shit was hilarious. Speaking of your favorite episode, and like I was about to get into, man, for, if you don't know, um... We're celebrating four years of podcasting, man. Four of them things. Sure. We started in the year 2016 in June. And just like I was saying, it allowed us to meet so many dope individuals, great individuals, some not so dope. Yeah. Some stick, some stick out like a sore thumb. Some people came and never posted the episode that they was on, but wanted us to post that one. They shit <laughs> <laughs> deleted that nigga. <laughs> so I want to start from the tippy. I really, I took some Pause. notes. What? Pause, pause no, on the tippy? Okay. No, just, keep right. okay. <laughs> just keep going. Okay. Before I, before I go into it, because I just went into a long tangent about YouTube, do you want to start it off about just four years of what you remember most about it or anything going on the anniversary? Oh, uh, shit, man. I remember not knowing what to expect starting. Shit, sometimes I still go into episodes not knowing what to expect, honestly, especially even when it's a guest. Um, Guests always add another dynamic to the conversation, which makes it more cool. Because you don't know how they are. You don't know how they're going to react to it. Some, some, we've had some stale guests. We've had some pretty not, you know, responsive motherfuckers that we. I know you're talking about had too. Overly responsive motherfuckers. Yeah. And you know, we've had people who just, you know, just seem to really be themselves and, um, you know, have a conversation with two guys that they never met, but. Make it seem like or feel like you know we've had plenty of conversations before, so mm-hmm. it's no problem, man. I remember I got some bloopers, man. I one blooper in particular it was my favorite. I ain't going to say what it was, but I would just say Councilman Blakely. Yeah, that, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The energy was great that on that one. Was my fave. That was one of my favorite moments because that was one of the most genuine laughs I probably ever had in my entire life. And I would say that's one of my favorite episodes. Um, when we actually had um. Councilman right. Jarrell Blakely on mm-hmm. because building relationships and you knew Craig already, right. but still building relationships, they trusted us to use our platform to run a campaign. And he won. And we're going he to take won. some credit for that. Take a little smidge. We're going to take a little credit for that because if, for the people that listen to our episode, they got a chance to fill his personality. You understand what I'm saying? Like for those that didn't know he was running, for those that didn't know it was even election time. Right, we got to show the world. Well, not the world, but we got. To, well, we are worldwide. We show the city, baby. But we got to show the city the personality of Councilman Jarrell Blakely. So that's one of my favorite episodes, and that was one of my favorite times. Moment. Just based on the stage that we was put on. But I'll start from you know episode one, just not really having an idea of what you want to do. I just know we just went down there and we just talked and it came out good. Yeah. And that be the crazy stuff because when people listen to the episode, you want to hear the feedback. And everybody said it was dope. But no to structure. me, it was nothing dope about it. It was just, we was down there talking. 
But had no structure, no. Topics. It wasn't. We didn't have nothing. Yeah. We were just down there talking, man. Um, so episode one is always going to be your baby because it's the it's the one that sparked it off. Episode five, even though our first guest was our brother Dean, I don't we had, remember that. That's too far. Episode five. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you don't remember that. Well, I'm not glad, but I'm glad that so I can speak on it. Episode five was police brutality. Uh-huh. With Ern, oh, with Ern and Snook Cyril. and Cyril. Yeah. So when you uh, mentioned yeah. Ern and Snook, it, it already popped in my head like, yo. Shout out to the homies. Episode man. five. That episode was special because I was the last one to arrive. So when I came down in my pop's basement, ass, Snook man. already had negative. <laughs> Snook already had like the camera set up. So we had the camera set up and we had Cyril and we had Ernie and we and then we just we just vibed out on police brutality and that was four years ago. So y'all already know what type of time we was on. We spoke on that. Episode nine sticks out. The CHD episode with Kendra. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, were saying that that's when they kind of like realized that the podcast brothers was the real deal. First off, wait a minute. My bad, my bad, my bad. I'm getting too ahead of myself. We weren't even the podcast brothers. My brother we were and my brother and me. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad that we turned into the podcast brothers. That's easier. Because my brother and me just didn't age well. It just, I mean, it isn't not the fact they didn't age well. It just didn't it wasn't really us. Yeah. It just sounded good. You know what I'm saying? It didn't I don't think we gave it time to really age. Something else came along that sounded better, and we went with that. Well, I don't be, did, but did we give the podcast brothers time? I I think we might have rushed all our names. The podcast brothers sticks. Yeah, we only had two names. I know, but when we were like, "Yo, what are we going to be?" We were just like, "Well, my brother and me." Bet. So then we right. Then when when I realized because I didn't know my brother and me was like a Nickelodeon show. I knew that. Yeah, I know you did, and you was like, "What you mean you ain't know that?" Like I didn't really know that. We used to watch it. We did, me and you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I don't, you I don't recall. Shit, though, for the side. So, and this is when I was trying to get the YouTube popping. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking like, how the hell am I going to compete with my brother and me if it's, if it's already popping as Nickelodeon? There's no way I can compete with that. So if somebody searches for us, they're always going to find the Nickelodeon show. Mm-hmm. So like, let's switch this name real quick. And the podcast brothers came and we went with it. So what I'm saying, we, we might have rushed it. We never laid out options. But that's cool. It is what it is. It wasn't really it wasn't really much we could do with a name that would fit, honestly. Like the podcast brothers is just perfect. Anything else would have been too much. Or I don't think would have been too uh I don't think it would have fit. Plain, simplistic, and describes the fucking show. <laughs> and shout out to all the guests that we had on. I can't go through Man, all a hundred and eighty guests, something. Bro. Yes. Well, it hasn't been a 180 guests. We've had multiple people on shows. We've had two people. We've had the round table. So at the end of the day, we've had... Yeah, but we've also had shows where we went like months with nobody coming. Okay. I want to say 100. A lot of, I said at least 100, motherfucker. I mean, if you want to be t- more than 100, but if you want to be technical... I said at least, nigga. I don't mean... But then again, people have come on multiple times. So we might have not had 100 different people, but mm-hmm. majority of our episodes, it, it just turned into that. Yeah. Because I think people saw we had something going on. And what do people say when you got something popping? Yo, when can I come on? Mm-hmm. That if really wasn't. It, they will come. That really wasn't the idea. But hey, it's dope. Let's go. Let's build. Mm-hmm. And we've built we, we've built some dope relationships with people. Build. Man. What'd I say? Build. We built some dope relationships with people. Yeah. Now, I don't want to go through all the episodes. But I want to say shout out to that live episode. We did the live episode. I definitely want to do that one over, man. I think I overthought that one because sometimes and I'll give you guys a little bit of advice. You want to do a live show? Just do your show. You don't really have to like it's a live show when you have people watching you, but they're coming to see you mm-hmm. do what you do. Mm-hmm. So for those, whenever the live shows, you know, go back because we're still COVID. Like we you don't still, even get, you can still do it. But not, well, it's I mean, just certain restrictions. It's, um, Either a certain amount of people or 25% of the building's capacity. And also depends on what people are, um, you know, into. People might not want to sit elbow to elbow, regardless of No, you can't. That's one of the rules into... Okay. Yeah, everything got to be six feet. Yeah. Supposed to be anyway. The live episode, the 100th episode, just, just milestones. Year one, year two, year three, now year four of the podcast, brothers. We've introduced so many segments... What was your favorite besides the one that you created? Because dig a hole, fuck is you doing was dig a hole. You always ask a nigga some shit on the spot. I don't know. Uh, well, let me name the uh, segments then, right? Mm-hmm. 
Dig a hole. Fuck is you doing? Same thing. Whatever. Uh, dope or nope, or how to not? How to not? Um, the like fresher fiasco. Was is fire. Fresher <laughs> fiasco. Platform. I mean, yeah, we've had five different Pick types your of poison. Things. Pick your poison. I'm gonna go with fuck is you doing? JJ just does it every time. Yeah, I think JJ just makes it pop. Yeah. I think that I mean, when you played it, you initially had it. It wasn't for that. It was for something else. Yeah, something else. But I heard that shit. I was like, nah, let me hijack that. Yeah, let me and, hijack and it. And it was a great idea ever since. Yep, it was a great idea ever since. Um, JJ, fuck is you doing? It's a staple. Fuck is you doing? The um the fuck dope and note was just do. tough to maintain, man, because you get tired of because sometimes people reach out to you sometimes they don't mm-hmm. and when they don't it's just more work for you to go find a song like all right listen it is what it is but it was one of those topics it was one of those segments that sparked conversation and every week there was people who was intrigued people to hear was the song. actually sending their music people were sending music mm-hmm. and people were actually rushing to the polls and voting and giving us our their thoughts on the actual songs and most of the songs because people couldn't say that they was hot that's a lot of nopes. It was a lot of knots. So mm-hmm. it is what it is. I like some of them. Matter of fact. I like some of them. Don't ma- play that shit, man. I'm about to play the first. Oh, my God. The first. This was the worst. Dope or dope nope. And nope ever. Yeah. Oh, my God. I hope this dude stops. Uh, the brothers be rolling. I hope he is not poisoning anyone else's him. The brothers be rolling by. This set it off. This set it off right here. The brothers be rolling by. The brothers be rolling by. The brothers be rolling by. No. up my feeling, my score is great. Great girl, enough to play with on my time. Time. Everyone isn't a friend of mine. You know that's okay. Cause the rhymes I say will explain itself in this as the rhythm. Will play. <laughs> hit that! Hit that red button. <laughs> right, hit that. Oh no, nah, that, that's a different joint. That's a different joint. You know what button I want, man? Yeah. Well, on this box, it's hard to you know go back and you, forth. You got it. Which one? Hit me with it. You know what it Wait is. A minute. Bullshit. Yes. But that one. Yes. Oh, bullshit! <laughs> now, once again, the strangest people. Bullshit. Okay. Bullshit. The strangest people. Not the strange. I won't call people strange, but just random people will hit you up and say, "Hey, play our record." And the brother was be he, rolling, the brother be rolling. <laughs> we wasn't even playing music, but this guy just wanted us to play his record. All right, right. buddy. You know, we did it. it. It set it off. But it's stuff like this that brings the conversation to the table, and we wasn't afraid to bring in that conversation, man. Mm, that was one of the worst records I've ever it might, ever heard. It didn't listen. I think it sounded different when I first heard it. What but brothers he rolling? What brothers he talking about? Be rolling. You talk about us? <laughs> I don't know. That was that was supposed to be some type of anthem. Never met the guy. Oh, bro. Don't know. I den- I deny that in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Fully rebuked. <laughs> but yeah, man, four years of potting. Congratulations to us. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I want to talk about the topic, right? Lauren London recently spoke to women, um, and she was saying, I don't know where she was at, but she spoke to a group of women, women, and she was saying, you aren't dating or in a relationship with a man until he is able to uplift you, educate you, make you a better woman. If this person doesn't accept your flaws and turn your arguments into suggestions, or good communication, man or soulmate, he is not. At first, when I read this, I said, "What the? F- what is she talking about?" But then, I said, "I get it. I get what she's saying." And I don't think that this applies to every situation because what you're not going to do is just randomly ramble off to somebody because you feel some type of way, right? But I think what I'm learning is. That I think I might have taken a took a lot of things personal, 
In regards to what? What you were saying? No, meaning that when you're in a relationship with a woman or you're around somebody that you love. Seems and pretty personal. Seems like the situation to take something personal. Right? I don't think I don't think it has to be like a woman's sometimes uh, the energy, you know, like we've always said, talk to me nice. And this is what I'm th- th- thinking about. We had the episode with Rick, episode 101. Shout out to Rick. And we said, talk to me nice and whatever you got going on or we're not going to hear it. Right. Because you don't want to take the energy that they're bringing to you personally. Mm-hmm. They could be going through something, but they're in the energy that they bring home or the energy they bring around you could be hostile. So well, if well, you isolate yourself then, but I don't have to be subject to that shit. Yeah. I don't think it works that way. <laughs> hey, but do something. Just because just just you mad at me, I'm going to be your punching bag or that I'm going to bend to your anger. Neither. That's a fact. You figure that shit the fuck out. Now, that was the conversation we was having, but can't we take control of the situation? I think that's what this post is about. You know, not every situation, but if we're in the wrong, right? Of course, they didn't want to hear our shit like, listen, I'm sorry. It'll never mm-hmm. happen again. It's never going to be that simple. Nope. But if you're in a situation where your girl, like, like Lauren London said, her flaws. So, boom, she comes home. And she's having a day. She's having a day where she, she might be on her cycle or she's just emotional. Or the way she expresses herself is through a lot of loud energy and you don't receive it. But then you go, okay, this ain't about me. I didn't do nothing. Let me figure out where this energy has come from. And you take control of the situation. It depends on exactly what she's doing. Yeah, it's, it's definitely situation. You know what I'm saying? Some shit, I could be like, all right, she tripping. Like, I'm going to just leave her the fuck alone for a minute and let her figure her own shit out. Other shit, I'm like, yo, well, you good? Like, you got a fucking problem or something? What's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, it just depends on how she coming at me that would dictate how I would respond to that. Because I, but it ain't always going to be, hey, baby, come here. Let me sit down and talk to you. I know you had a bad day. Let me rub your feet. It ain't, that's just unrealistic as fuck. It ain't always going to be that. You are correct. So even though, like I say, I don't think Lauren London is talking about every situation. And this was a conversation that she was having for women. So this is, you know, their world, their right, you know, their vision of how they see things. At the same time, it can't be that every time because what you don't want to do, ladies, is make your man feel like he's a punching bag. But I will just say there are some times where I think we can take control of the situation. You understand what I'm saying? By saying, okay, understand that this isn't me. I didn't do nothing this time. <laughs> mm-hmm. I didn't do it. So let me see. Hmm. What is, where is this energy coming from? It doesn't make it right. You get what I'm saying? But I, like I said, when I read this and I actually started reading the book that Lauren and Nipsey was reading the ways of the superior man. So I, oh, get, I read that. So you mm-hmm. get where their energy comes from. Nah, meaning I ain't, I ain't read it. I know you didn't read it because <laughs> when I tried to explain to you the feminine masculine energy, you was like, nah, I don't think that. But if you read that book, you'd understand it. I don't mean I would agree. No, I'm saying you would understand like, boom, hey, this is what she's talking about. Because what it says in the book, and I can't quote it word for word, is... Did you read it or listen to it? Same thing. I get the same information. Which one did you do? I listen to it. All right. It's the you same. read it. It's just, no reading is required in listening. Like. Okay, so so what do you call it when I was listening to the book? It's an audio book. Okay, motherfucker's but, talking to you the whole time. Okay, You're listening. Okay, okay, but when I described it, I... See, here's the thing. What do okay. I say? I was listening to this book. Okay. I was listening to this audio book. To make you happy. Yeah. I was listening to this book. You saying I'm re- I was reading I was reading this audio book. <laughs> what is the d- I'm taking in information, okay? I was taking in <laughs> information. <laughs> All right, I can settle up on that. I'm taking in information <laughs> from this book, Ways of the Superior Man. And <laughs> once again, I've said this before. But men and women both possess masculine and feminine energy. Feminine energy could be a lot of, can be chaotic sometimes, not in a negative way. Like, and it's not just, you know what? Feminine energy can be chaotic. Men and women both possess it, regardless of what it is. Mm-hmm. So if your energy is to have a conversation and to continue the conversation on, and then you got some men that be like, yo, what the hell are you talking about? Mm-hmm. It's up to you. If you're the one that doesn't possess that energy in that moment, it's then it can be your duty to look and be like, okay, let me figure out what's really bothering you. You know, like mm-hmm. if your girl be like, yo, or you be like, yo, babe, we getting ready for the movies. You ready? And she goes, yeah, I don't want to go no more. Why not? What's the matter? Right. You figure out what is wrong. 
And in the book, it was just like, you know what? Your girl just might want to dance right then and there. You grab her by the hand and you just dance with her. You know what I'm saying? Like, just, it could be anything that has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, I think what Lauren is saying in some situations, as a man, as the leader, as the teacher, use those situations to not play victim. Well, first, you got to know your woman. That's right. a fact. Yeah, don't pick your woman up to dance when you know she don't like the fucking dance. Why well, like, ain't say pick her up? Boy. I'm just saying, like, if she on the bed when y'all supposed to be getting ready to go out, and you like, come on, babe, let's go, let's go, let's go, and you pull her up off the bed, attempt to dance with her, and knowing that she don't fuck with dancing, you just be careful, like, because let me tell stay you, stay within the realms of who that person is, and you know what shit like that. Because let me tell you something as well. You can be this man. You can be this soulmate guy. She still bounce on you. But if you gonna, <laughs> but if you're the woman, not gonna be mature to accept my. Right. You always joke. You always think something funny when well, I'm trying to lighten the mood. Right. So let's say you are that guy. Like, listen, baby, what's wrong? And she is on some not knowing how to express herself. So what this post is missing is you got to be. You got to be receiving. You got to be ready to receive that. You can't just be wanting to fight a guy because I've seen it. Right. Listen, I'm giving you love, but you want to be defensive. Right. All right well, guess I got what? no beef. And it, and it might come from daddy issues. Right. Something that me and you got nothing to do with. I can't right. help you. Dude, we're like, what, what do you want me to listen? I'm trying to love you. But if you haven't gotten over. People got to also remember that when somebody's attempting to love you, like, it's like that effort after a while has a, a limit. Like, if I'm putting out a certain energy and that energy isn't being matched, how the fuck long you think I'm going to keep giving you this energy? Like, come on now. I am a huge fan of reciprocation. That too. But I'm a huge fan of this. I get what Lauren London is talking about, and she's trying to give the game to the women. And even though we've done a hundred and something, 80, 182 episodes talking, contradicting ourselves, talking about this, talking about that, I know I said some things that have contradicted myself. Facts. But I'm here to tell you right now I would rather the men help the men and the women help the women. And then we come together as more whole and bond. I'm not really a fan of women telling men how to do their thing. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's yeah, not it. That's, to a degree. I get it. Yeah, that's not telling me that you got your shit together. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me how to do it. Well, if I ask you, if I ask how to love you, yeah. But don't sit up here and be like, yo, men ain't shit. Men ain't shit. Because guess what? We've all been through ain't shit phases. Mm -hmm. Everybody that's on the social media, so everybody you meet with a story to tell did somebody dirty. So don't talk to me in the sense that you've never done no dirt. Done no dirt. Right. It's just you're tired of the dirt and you want something good. So now you're like, yo, men ain't shit. Right. We've all been ain't shit. What about your shit? What about you? Yeah. We've all been there. Bitch, wipe your own ass first. <laughs> what the fuck you talking about We've all been there So if you are speaking on Cause hey Hey ladies Accept our flaws Right Accept our flaws I, I think it works all ways So that's why I say hey You know Worry about ourselves Accept your woman's flaws But your man gotta be perfect lady <laughs> What the fuck Thanks. Once again It might be more to this Maybe It may be It might be for guys To have our own Conversation. Hey, listen. If she ain't accepting your flaws, fellas, Bounce. she ain't yourself. <laughs> hey, fellas, we ain't going for that bullshit no more, man. <laughs> You're if she, listen, if she ain't taking you back when you cheat on her, she ain't Bounce. your soulmate. She, she ain't the one for you, <laughs> yeah. but she really don't love you. But you see how crazy that sound though, right? But women, but women, when they put their bullshit flaws out there, it, it, you just automatically got to accept it because that's who that woman. But is. once again, but they'll make the argument that cheating isn't a flaw; it's a decision; it's a choice that you choose to make. And we can make our, de and we can say that the way you act is your decision. You don't have to come in this house and go crazy. Yeah, you really, that is definitely all. The you don't have to do that. That is your choice. That is your choice, man. <laughs> I think I'm gonna sit here and be your punching bag and not. React back to you Bitch This ain't your job Bitch I don't have to keep A fucking code of conduct Around here I'm about to let you to let you The fuck have it What the fuck is you talking about That's a fact But it's just like I say But I still get What she was trying to say I get it I do I just think that We need to Police ourselves I don't know if That's a good choice of words But you know men We need to do a better job Cause I don't I don't think we talk en Enough about What's bothering us Or what can help us Mm -hmm. You know, like even at the five, first off, our Father's Day was lit. I think this was like one of the first Father's Days we had where I really didn't see women wishing 
themselves. Yeah, yeah you're right. I, like, father's, Day. Yeah. father's Day was lit. But what did we talk about? Jordans. Yeah, we talked about basketball. We talk about yeah. we, we talk, talk about, about when we talked about men's shit. We talked we talk about, about men's shit. That we shit. Like. But does that help us in the thick of things though? While women are I think so, man. Honestly, for some niggas, for some niggas don't like to get that deep. Just being with the homies and shooting this shit is enough to reset their system to go home and be like, what's up, babe? I had a good day. I missed you. That's all men be needing. You know, that's all it is. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, a lot of niggas and even those who are who are in loving relationships, sometimes being around your girl or your man, it's like, all right, motherfucker, I got to go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I see you all this. I just want to be around some different sometimes, energy to come back to miss you. Sometimes all a man needs is a quick getaway. And if you that's come it? back, because we are good at, even though like everybody holds grudges, but if we just get away, have a good time, it's like a reset for us. She ain't apologize, but we reset. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm good. No matter what you're going through, I don't feel that shit that I felt earlier before I left this motherfucker. I went out, I had a good time, I laughed, I drank, I popped some jokes, I fucking won a prize, whatever. I ate good, <laughs> and I came to fuck home with yeah. a, with a recharged battery. What's up, babe? Oh, you stole that shit from earlier. Damn. All right, well, I'm going to be playing 2K. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I give, let me know when you feel like talking this shit. Right. <laughs> so so for me, like I said, to piggyback, to go back onto what Lauren said, it takes maturity on both ends. So it is what it is. Also, I think you can't, just because somebody else is angry, you know what I mean? You got to adopt their anger. Like, I'm not about to be mad just because you're mad. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you're coming at me about something and it's something you're passionate about that you are wrong about, don't expect me to adopt that same energy of anger that you got and try to match you or out talk you or be more mad than you are or whatever. Like, no, nah, if I'm not on that type of time, if I'm not on that energy, I'm not giving it either. Like, I don't, I'm not about to just to muster myself up to go into this zone of, of argument just to match you. Like, nah, you fucking up whatever, whatever vibe I had going on before you walked up in this motherfucking bitch stirring up mischief. And fellas, no. Love her flaws. This is correct. But know your strengths and weaknesses. Don't take on something that you aren't equipped to take on. Right. If her flaws overpower your strength. Your strength. <laughs> man, look. <laughs> hey, baby. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, you, about to, I'm about to go get a beer. You want to <laughs> have something. And that's another thing I want to talk to those men about. If you're a drinker or a smoker, do that. But don't let the relationship make you become that. I want to definitely touch it. Maybe this ain't the episode for it mm-hmm. because we got somewhere to what get you mean, to. Become that. Meaning, if you wasn't drinking or smoking before, but your girl stresses you out so much that you didn't turn to it, I'm not a big fan of that. Normally, yeah. Do it. Do it on normally, your own accord. I never. I, it does happen, but I've seen, I've seen it happen like that. But also, it's been other factors that go into that. Also, like what? I don't know. Fucking. Somebody passed away. Oh, see, see, I, or, or like a job was lost. I'm only like talking that. about. No, I'm just saying. Relationship. But I, yeah, I get that, but I don't. Uh, in a lot of instances, it'd be a lot of other shit going on in a personal life. In addition, with his girl flipping on him, that'll make him turn and rely on a specific substance. Mm-hmm. I ain't. I, don't, I mean, if you in a relationship with somebody and the rest of your life is good, and that person is your only stress factor that makes you do that shit, yeah, you gotta get the fuck rid of them. Hey. You, you stress me out. To, I never picked up a cigarette day in my life. Fucking ninety first day in this relationship, bitch. I'm on my third pack of cools. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like new, mm-hmm. new. Yeah. But if it's other shit going on in your life that's making you frustrated, and then on top of that, you got a frustrating relationship. You sound like n- nigga need to clean house, bitch. Get rid of everybody. I'm gonna end Mop this. The floor. I'm gonna end this off with balance. You know, take care of them when they in need, but also don't make it a habit, baby. Right. Some days I ain't got it. And like, then also, too, I don't want to hear that yeah, shit. Some people gotta, you know, just sort through your own shit. There's only so much that your spouse can do for you, or anybody can That's do for fact. you at a certain a point. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you will talk about it, offer solutions and suggestions on how you can move past it or what I can do to help you. But after a week or two, it's like, All right, yo, my nigga, I told you what the fuck to do already. <laughs> like, you still act, you still talk about the same shit. Fuck else you want me to tell you? I ain't Dr. Phil. I ain't got no goddamn therapy degree, my nigga. Mm-hmm. I just analyzed you as a person and gave you my best fucking insight on what I thought you should do to help yourself. Can you leave me the fuck alone, please? You you bringing me the fuck down? Yeah, don't like don't talk about that one friend of yours every day, fam. Yeah, we, no, we already had a conversation, like. Yeah. 
Like I'm trying to hear you're that. keeping her as your friend. You deal with that. Yeah. Ooh, Leave the rest of us alone. Fresh a fiasco. You ready to get a Bennett? Yeah. Let's knock the cobwebs off of that. Pause. <laughs> T.I. is set to teach business of trap music class at Clark Atlanta University this fall. Fresh a fiasco. He's set to teach what? He is set to teach business of trap music. Fiasco. Why? What is it? You sent this to me. <laughs> <laughs> I try to get more information. What is the business of trap music? This is a fiasco. It's a quick fiasco. <laughs> what, the, what is he talking about? What is he going to be just, telling these just people? Just teach business. Like, well, why can't right. you just teach investments? Why right. can't you just teach stuff? Why do you have to teach business teach of trap, trap music? music? Fiasco. What? <laughs> We're not even going to waste our time on that. What's the difference between the business of trap music and all the other music? That Unless this is slang for something else. I don't understand it. I'm sorry, Atlanta. I, I know somebody in the South is going to have a problem with what we're saying. But I don't give a fuck, man. It's all good. It's niggas, not that. Them niggas talk about North, just North, that, that, North, that's a fact. North shit all the time. That's a fact. That's a fact. <laughs> Let's get our shit mad. off. That shit don't make no sense. The, mu- the What is he called? The musician of trap music? <laughs> the business of trap music. <laughs> I really want to know what business, what is the difference in just music? Like why is I don't know, bro. What's, I just don't want to sound can ignorant. Somebody, can somebody teach the business of country music? <laughs> I don't know. Somebody teach the business of jazz. Uh, somebody teach the business of reggae business. Damn you, Clifford! <laughs> <laughs> I need more insight, bro. I, I'm. Is that an elective? <laughs> like, is this mandatory? Need, like, is this nah, a, was, that might be I one need, of them classes you need what because you major, need a few more credits. What major? Am I going after where this is a part of my curriculum? Listen, Atlanta, I'm not trying to be funny, but it's trap music and it's an Atlanta university. It means something to them. It just means to me, it might just mean something to them. I don't know what it could be, but it means something to them. Trap in Atlanta, peanut butter and jelly. I mean, they just call it trap. It's just selling drugs. We call it the block up here out west. They call it the set. (laughs) Bitch, in down south, Uh, they call it the trap. It's all the same shit. (laughs) (laughs) Fresher fiasco. There's a lot of non-black voiceover people saying that they no longer want to play uh, people of color, meaning saying that characters of people of color should be played by people of color. Um, who is this? Actress Jenny Slate abandons her role as Missy on Big Mouth, says black characters should be played by black people. I think there was another one I saw. It was like a Simpsons show mm-hmm. where... Um, I can't remember the character, but he's now, you know, quit that. Fresh a fiasco. Hey, man, I appreciate all my white allies. You are appreciated. All right. We need white allies in this fight. But at the same time, where the fuck you niggas been the last 50 years? <laughs> <laughs> now you don't want to do the job you've been doing, but why the fuck you ain't been quit? Niggas is all acting like this shit is brand new. Yeah. I don't know if I should give you an applause or just shrug my shoulders at you. You know what I'm saying? Like, thank you, but all right. You already made your bread off doing this shit the whole time. Now you little funky ass cartoon on the white Harley watch, basically. Now you talk some. You know what? That is that <laughs> is a black fact. guy shot. The Simpsons are like 30, 30 seasons <laughs> in. Oh, this fuck. Now you talk about I don't want to be Marge no more. Bitch. <laughs> and keep, the big, keep doing it We fucking actually like it and, and the Big Mouth I think they're on like season 3 But those only go so far Right So it's not like You was gonna get 9 seasons Out of yeah. a fucking cartoon like that Now I will say That for the moment It does give People of Somebody um, Somebody black Or whatever character it is A job For as long as the season still goes I will say that But I'm gonna just go fiasco Because that's just not The fight that we're into We don't give a goddamn. We don't care about record labels removing urban from urban music. We don't care about none of that stuff. This is about what it's about. Like we want to be treated fair in the real world. I don't care about, you know, what a cartoon can I do because I've always said that, you know, regardless of what the character is, if you want a, a gay person in your show, go get a gay person. Right. If you want to do you if, if you want a black character, right, that's just like go get a black This is guy. like Tyler Perry writing that T V show Sisters. But he's writing it. Ain't no woman writing it. Right. It's that's weird. Too. Like, bro. We stand how? on all of that. It should be women writing their story, men writing our story, back to what I was talking about with Lauren Hunt, Laura London. Only we can correct ourselves. Right. Women, y'all get y'all shit right, and then we come together. 
right now over <laughs> me. <laughs> so, like, fiasco, fam. We appreciate it, but yeah, now I'm straight, bro. Yeah. Fresher fiasco. The NBA and NBPA are planning to allow players to replace the last name of their jerseys with statements on social justice. Fiasco. Fucking nigga, they ain't gonna be. How many Black Lives Matter jerseys we gonna have out there? <laughs> How many I can't breathe jerseys? How many I can't breathe or say their names? Like, man, that shit is pointless, bro. That shit is I don't think it is. Um, because I'm gonna go fresh, especially with you know Brianna Teller, and especially with so many different situations where um, their you know police have done so much dirt, and they haven't been brought to justice. Like the um, George Floyd situation, where the cops were fired and being tried. That's just one. There's so many others that's happening. So if a basketball player in the NBA is getting like a, a few million views per game, and you have Brianna Teller's name on the back of your jersey, mm-hmm. it could mean something. Don't know what it could mean because people what is, will ignore. What does it help? Well, we, well when we look at we, we, if you watching the games at this point of what's happening in the world in the NBA, you know the players. You're not going to refer to them to what the back of the jersey say. I get what you're saying because you're watching basketball. I'm watch watching basketball, basketball after right. after they're introduced. And you I'm know, not even looking at the back. And of you jersey. know that's LeBron James. That's not right. Whoever else, Ricky Tan. So mm-hmm. we've watched everybody watch us jump and dunk a ball and not really care about our message. Right. So it looks good. I don't know what it'll do. They wore I Can't Breathe t-shirts. You know what I'm saying? When Eric Garner got choked out in New York. I, I think social media, protesting, and actually calling up these governors and mayors work better than the NBA doing something during a game. I just right. don't think that change. I don't think it helps any at all. Think about oh, yeah. it like this. Colin Kaepernick kneeling for the flag. It didn't change Anything. It no. was a good. It was, it was a message. A good gesture. Yeah, it was a right. good gesture. But you're not going to change nothing because they're not paying attention to you for your message. They mm. want to just see you dunk the ball, LeBron James. Yep, that's a fact. Yep. So, so I really, I really don't think it's again. It's a, it's an awesome gesture. It's an awesome gesture. LeBron <laughs> tweets about this stuff all the time. It ain't like. No, no fucking detectives are showing up at his house like, hey, LeBron, we're with you on this. What do you think we should do? Like, and at the end of the day, but I think a tweet. Or stuff like that might mean more than the I, do, I do, I yeah. do. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Right, like right. he he tweets about it already, and it gets as much traction as it does. Now, Instagram a name posts. on the back of a jersey, eh. Instagram posts and stuff like that. I think now if they better. if they if they have these names on their jerseys and the proceeds, let's say they do, let's say LeBron wears Brianna Taylor's name on the back of his jersey for the rest of the season throughout the playoffs and donates each jersey and. Sells each jersey after the game and then donates donates those proceeds to that family. I'm with that. That's the latest fuck. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I don't really know what's sell yeah. your jersey on eBay, get a couple couple grand for it, a couple hundred G's. Proceeds go straight to that family of that individual. Mm-hmm. But speaking of the NBA, with the season being uh starting back July 31st, I believe, with eight games in the regular season and they go to the playoffs. I don't think that it's seeded East versus West no more. Well, Western Conference versus nah, Eastern Conference is just top 16. In the league. Tell me about it. I know the Lakers had the opportunity. You are a Lakers fan, and the Lakers had the opportunity to win a championship before and now after. Uh, so what are your thoughts on this basketball situation? It's just weird, man. Honestly, I want to see basketball, but this TV fire. It is. Jesus it Christ. is. <laughs> I want to I want to watch basketball really bad, but. It just seems like too much going into it, you know what I'm saying, um, in regards to everything socially and health-wise. Now, socially, we've been dealing with social injustices since the fucking beginning of time. So I don't think Kyrie's Irving of we need to change something now is really really doing too much. You niggas, been, you, he was on the Cavaliers team when they wore the I Can't Breathe t-shirts when Eric Garner got choked out. So now... After the George Floyd, Pat, George Floyd murder by the police, I don't know what his difference in not playing or trying to get something to change now. And as far as I know, the NBA has been a hundred with niggas as far as allowing players' voices to speak out and speaking out on social injustices. Like I don't, I've never seen the NBA handle a racial issue or any type of the issues inappropriately when it came to black or white players. They were starting to play that shit, and Adam Silver picked up the torch. Like, I, they hand out disciplines we need be, and they hand out a, 
uh, appraisals and praise would need be. So I don't the talk of a black NBA. It it sounds good, but what the fuck is wrong with the NBA we got now? There ain't no owners. It ain't no ain't no black general managers. I mean, you gotta get your money up. If it ain't going, they it's just it's one of those things. You gotta buy your way in. It might be it might be racist up there. I'm pretty sure. It's, Absolutely. I'm pretty sure it's some racist elbows that need to be rubbed up there. But I ain't gonna say it's everybody at the same Not time. Not all slave either. masters was me. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll say this. I think that it is weird, but I would love to have basketball back. Um, with some players, I think it is official to the players that made the announcement they're not going to play. I think they already had to, you know, say their name. So I think that everybody else that we like, if you haven't heard their name, then they're going to be playing. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to see what the NBA is going to look like not having a Western Conference and Eastern Conference because I think they wanted to move there anyway. I think they've been wanting to do top 16. They, it's been a talk, it's it's been been a talk, talk. for a couple of, couple of years. Excuse and if, me, a couple and of years now. And if this cooks, if this works, it's going. It's, that's going to be the format for the rest of, you know, for the, right. of the way they do business or the playoffs from now on. But I'll say this. As far as Kyrie Irving wanting to stop everything and do their own league, it sounds good, right? But I've always felt like between the money that the NBA players and the NFL players, y'all all could have been did something together a long time ago. And y'all never did. That's what I'm saying. You like, guys combined have billions of dollars and y'all blow it on nothing. Yeah. You know, they tell you that majority of all black athletes go, go broke. broke. They mm-hmm. go broke. Now we can always say that, yeah, we wasn't educated enough. This and the third, but you don't really have to stop the NBA. The millions are coming in. Even if you did your own thing, like we've seen new leagues, right. the big three, ABA, we've seen new leagues. They, if you don't have money behind you, it's just not going to pop. Not only that, it ain't just it ain't just the NBA itself. It's this fucking million dollar corporation sponsorships behind. That's what it. I'm saying. Like, if you don't got if, if you don't got McDonald's Gatorade, behind you, Nike, Gatorade, fam. McDonald's. If you're not going to get them behind Under you, Armour, the TV deal. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, like. Yeah. You gotta create. They gotta come up with a, another uh, 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 players association. Yeah, they gotta reconstruct that for union purposes. It's 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 a lot that I don't see. Yo, just Daniels next. beat their ass, man. Yeah, all of them just watching Avengers. Daniels beat that. She should have been killed. That nigga, man. You all of this shit. You should have murdered that nigga when y'all was in France. Or whatever the fuck y'all was at. Y'all ain't even be in this shit right now. But um, yeah, I think with all the money combined, we could have been. They, they could have been changed happening. You know, mm-hmm. like. I make fun of, you know, Dennis Rodman being from Trenton and he made millions of dollars his career and blew it all. I think his net worth is like 300,000. I ain't mad. I mean, hey, it, it, it is what it Live is. the life you want. Bro. But I've always but I've always felt like this. If every athlete just donated or did something for their city, there's an athlete from every city. If you did something for your city, we'd probably be in better, you know, better yeah. negotiating status. But you don't. Now you guys want to just stop everything and create your own league to do what? To blow it? I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Who's going to run it? Who going to run it? Who's going to run it? Jesse Jackson. Chasing them hoes, Jesse. (laughs) You got to, uh, fuck is you doing? I do. Can I please be blessed with the smooth sounds of JJ Icefish, please? Motherfucker. Oh, yeah. The fuck are you talking about? The fuck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I like that. Oh shit! Give me the Lord Jamar one more time. The fuck are you talking about? The fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he cursed me the fuck out. <laughs> Podcast Brothers episode one eight or two. You understand? Yes, sir. It's being brought to you. Excuse me. This segment of fuck is you doing is being brought to you by podcast brothers episode 182 by your boy fresco this week's fuck is you doing is dedicated to none other than the philadelphia willie popping rapper meat mill meat mill has been on the up and up with reconstructing his image since his last jousting i gotta say i think he's been doing a pretty decent job with you know, just keeping his name out of funny situations and kind of moving in a way where no bullshit really, you know, really hits his name or whatever like that, which is a good thing. I, I like to move as drama free as possible, but, you know, every once in a while, you kind of, even on that drama free journey, unfortunately, you come across some, you know, just a little bit, nothing crazy, but 
Um, just recently, there was Meat posted a picture of himself on Instagram. Had a couple, couple, couple grand in his hand, just chilling or whatever. I don't know what the caption on his picture said, but Trey Songs commented on the picture and said, "You know, since you since you're showing off all these bands, why don't you join the Feed My City Challenge?" Yeah, yeah, cool, no problem, right? And which is how challenges kind of they kind of right? go, right? Yeah, yeah. I got a challenge. Oh shit, you got bread? You showing off the bread? Yo, why don't you join the Feed My City? Well, challenge? I'm saying social media, like right? Yeah, people. You know, uh, 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 kind of bring you in through yeah. just comments on your pictures or whatever. So Trey commented that on Meek shit, and Meek kind of got at him a little bit. He proceeded to tell Meek uh, Trey that, um, you know, I donated X amount to my community on this date, and I donated my four hundred thousand dollar Phantom, which is my favorite car, and I gave another twenty Gs. I donated X amount in total. You know what I'm saying? Don't play with me like that about my city. I give back that or whatever. So Trey was just like, I, I, I'm I challenging you to a challenge the same way I challenged everybody. <laughs> I would challenge you the same way I challenged DJ Mustard and Fab and everybody else that accepted the challenge. You know what I'm saying? And Meek's response was, nah, basically you're trying to play me. You know, <laughs> that ain't nothing but a little four grand I got in that picture, da-da-da, like that. But it was just, I think it was extremely blown out of proportion. Especially since they know each other. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know the nigga. You know Trey. From what I heard about Trey and what I've seen, I think he moves pretty solid. I've never seen him really do no goofy shit like that on the internet with kind of counting another man's money or being in his pockets like that. I truly don't think that was that nigga's intent. I don't think he's that kind of guy. But Meek is the kind of guy to always take shit incorrectly and get emotional about it and respond emotionally before he really even knows what the fuck is going on. So... Although this was a tiny spat, it could have went completely different. And the part that kind of made me think Meek was on some bullshit for real was that Trey commented was like, nigga, I called you on both of your phone numbers and you replied to me with a DM. Like, but you say you, you, you but you say we, we fly with you, my man. It's like, fuck is you doing? You gonna talk on social media all day when a nigga call you, you don't want to answer the phone. That's corny as fuck. The whole shit could have been deaded. Nothing needed to be said on, further on social media after that phone conversation was had. Yo, bro, I wasn't coming at you like that. I was just saying, I see you with your bread. Why don't you join the Feed My City Challenge? I wasn't in your pockets. I wasn't counting your bread. And I wasn't disturbing or trying to disrespect your integrity of of the man you are in, in, in light of you giving back to your community. Simple. It's simple shit. That could have been, oh, all right, my bad, my nigga. You know, I, I, I did take it wrong. My bad. Whatever. But yeah, I got you. I'll join your challenge. All right, cool. Bye. Click. That's it. But niggas do so much for social media that you can't even decipher when this isn't a serious issue for you to be going back and forth with a nigga. Like he just he just offered you to a challenge, bro. That was it. You either take it or you fucking leave it. But trying to show niggas up on the gram to get your little points up is corny as fuck. I don't like it. No, a lot of other people don't like it, and we would all love to know what the fuck is you doing. What did you do? It's just corny. What the fuck are you talking about? What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, man. The fuck are you talking See, the about? thing is with Meek, is we saw his change. Well, unfortunately, when all of us try to change, when you stop, you know, reading or, you know, learning, you resort back to your old ways. So I can see Meek being on that reform talk and probably still is. Mm -hmm. But then when you go back to your personal life, how you handle right, your own like, situation, then, then it's just like, OK, I got a baby on the way. I'm not really on like stuff like that. Like I'm, I, I'm in a new relationship. I'm not yeah. reading like I was reading. I'm not. You can tend to go back to the way you were. Meek Mill resorted back to his old ways. And unfortunately, it kind of took away from all the work that he's been doing. Because that's yeah. what people want to talk about. Because for what, like two years, we've been talking about how Meek's changed. Change, how right. cool he was. He made peace with Drake. Um, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just been a, a stand-up citizen doing it for his city. So if I'm a Trey Songz and I see that you're doing it, of course I'm going to reach out to you because... You love your city. And I see that you're giving back. And I'm doing, I see that you've given back before. And I'm doing a challenge. So I'm going to challenge people who I know are willing to accept the challenge. I ain't going to ask a nigga who I know ain't going to give nothing. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, 
Why well, would and especially when when I asked DJ Mustard, Fab, and everybody else, and they're like, "Yeah, no problem." But you be like, "Yo, man, don't try to play no, you like right. that. Don't try like, to cut my pocket. You sure give back." What are you not seeing? I didn't say, "Yo, you never gave back nothing. Why don't you just join this challenge?" So you know, say you can start to give back to your community or some shit like that. That would have been too much. He's like, "Yo, I see you got your bands out, man. Why don't you join the Feed My City Challenge? Don't try to play me like that, nigga. <laughs> I give back." <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Oh man, this was episode 182, man. You ready to get up out of here? Let's do it, man. This was a great episode. I, uh, man, it feels good to be back. Hey, it, it is actually. It's very refreshing. Mm-hmm. Talking to your body, man. You know what I'm saying? It's mm-hmm. been a minute. Your body, talking to you. Mm, okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> hey, this was Podcast Brothers 182. Podcast Brothers episode 182. You I just can said follow, that. You can follow your boy on Instagram at Fresco Fame and on Twitter at Fresco Famous. Again, if you need your car detail inside and out within the Burlington and Mercer County counties and New Jersey and the surrounding areas, holler at your boy on all social platforms. If you have my personal number already, hit me on there. If you don't have time to clean your car, holler at your boy and I'll get you right. I promise. And we out. Hey. We're brothers, we're happy and we're singing and we're colored.